yet again, one final thing. I keep on thinking of other ones, ones, ones to mention. Um, there's a systems dynamics group run uh, out of the University of Worcester, uh, sorry, Worcester Polytechnic, by a guy called Mike, Mike Radziki. Uh, also a guy called Dave Wheat, W-H-E-A-T, who's based at the University of Oslo. And, of course, the whole Forrester group uh, at MIT. Those, I think, are the foundation of which we could build an engineering-based economic and we desperately need it. Well, I, I do believe that's that's good advice. And as an engineer who actually went and got an MBA, I have to tell you, one of the first things I had to relearn was that uh, the de- dependent and independent axes are reversed uh, <laughs> for the economics crowd. But oh, I that's nonsense. To get past yeah. That. Yeah, well, you've managed to survive it. It's nonsense. And one thing I've done is, uh, apart from the work I do on finance, I, uh, in, in Chapter 4 of my book, Debunking Economics, is titled Size Does Matter. I had a lot of fun with chapter titles in the book. Yeah. And that was the whole the obsession there, classical economists. And it's the school that dominates economics is called neoclassical economics. It's a particular religious belief dressed up in mathematical terms. Uh, it, it is not a, not a sound analysis of a capitalist economy at all. But uh, they have this idea about you know, competition is better than monopoly. And part of that argument goes, you, you would have done with your MBA, you have a downward sloping market demand curve, so they've got the, the, actually the wrong way around, but they show um, demand falling as price, uh, or demand rising as price falls, given the way they draw the curves, right. and then supply being a rising function as price rises, so does supply. Um, and then they say, in the perfect market, everything happens where the two curves cross, you know, that importance, you know, right. of the intersecting straight lines. But they then show you during monopoly, there's a third line called marginal revenue, and the intersection of marginal revenue with the supply, with so-called supply curve, is what determines output for the monopoly. So you have a competition you get where the two curves cross, monopoly you get where another curve crosses, and then you draw up to the price line to work out what the price should be, and you show monopoly is worse than competition, and we're better off with competitive firms, blah, blah, blah. The mathematics is crap. Simple basic idea behind it, they've mistaken infinitesimal for zero. But what they argue is that an individual competitive firm sees a horizontal demand curve. Now that's saying that quantity, you can change the quantity of a single firm by you know, the amount of a thousand units, let's say, and have no impact on market price. But at the same time, they're arguing that the market, if the total quantity produced on the market grows by 1,000 units, price will fall. <laughs> I've gone through the logical conundrum, and the mathematics is nonsense. Yes. Uh, they, have a, they have a different theory, which isn't so bad, but it, it actually only works if you can actually model competition as a one-off shot, they call the Corno, Corno-Nash uh, uh, game, uh, game theoretic solution. So I pull that all apart in a couple of articles in Physica A. I can't get it published in straight economics journals, but I get it published in non-orthodox economics journals and physics journals and so on. So the whole foundation, right from the whole idea of supply and demand, is bad mathematics, and it's time we just got rid of them. Well, I, I appreciate your insights, Doctor. And um, again, in the interest of educating our engineer readers, I did want to mention again your book, Debunking Economics, The Naked Emperor of the Social Sciences. And uh, I recommend that engineers read this book. Uh, any engineer who aspires to be among the next generation of uh, engineer capitalists should get this for their library, and knowledge is power. And you can find... Uh, Dr. Keene's blog at www.debtdeflation.com. And when I was there, I, I saw that you were working on a new book to be titled Finance and Economic Breakdown. Is there anything you can tell us about that? It's putting uh, the models of Harmon Minsky, who's the person who we now regard as the person who understood how capitalism functions properly when, and points up at the danger of letting the financial system take over, putting his uh, models into mathematical form and then trying to make them accessible for the general reader, plus expanding them dramatically. So I, I combine Minsky's views of what he calls financial instability with the work of a group called the circuit theorists who emanate from mainly from, uh, from Italy and France, about how money is actually created within the economy. So rather than living in a, what's called a fractional reserve system, uh, the actual creation of money is the reverse. The financial system creates the loans and the deposits simultaneously, first of all, goes looking for reserves if they need them later, and most of the reserve systems look, look like a sieve. The American system is a classic instance of that. You have a so-called 10% reserve ratio, but in fact it only applies to household deposits. There's no rule like that at all on corporate deposits and no rule of God on, on euro currency transfers and so on. So um, I combine that to give you a, a, a genuinely monetary model of the economy 
and that I'm trying to make it something which is accessible to the general reader. So I've worked out a tabular way of building systems of coupled differential equations that describe financial systems. And that at the end of that, I'm now building a multi-sectoral model. So economists have failed to build a model that shows the input-output nature of production in a dynamic sense. Ironically, it's because they excluded two of the most essential aspects of capitalism, being the fact that it's a monetary system and that things take time. So they, they try to have no money system where everything happens in equilibrium and they could never get it to work. I've managed to make a multi-sectoral dynamic monetary model uh, work quite successfully. Uh, but that's the hairy end and at that end I would much appreciate some assistance from engineers in advancing the modelling because I think that's this, this type of multi, um, well, non-linear, uh, dynamic, non-equilibrium modelling is what we need to model how the capital system actually functions. And in closing I'll say one, one thing about capitalism. I'm both a critic and a fan. And the worst people you can have are people who are simply fans of your system, which is where the neoclassicals come in, because they eulogize. They tell you basically your king can you, you can stop the tides coming in and so on. And that's what gave us this catastrophe in the first place. So what we read above all else is a, is a, is a break from ideology and a move to realism in how we analyze the economy. And on that front, I have more faith in engineers than virtually any other professional group on the planet. Yeah, well, typically they are problem solvers, and the ones that I've had the chance to meet are usually motivated by making the world a better place so mm. maybe we can uh, work together and I'd appreciate uh, that Doctor I, I thank you very much for your insights and being with us here today on engineer.net um, Thank you, you're welcome you're most welcome